There you go. Mm hmm. I like that better. Pretty close. Okay, no dry spots. So I do get pretty anal about this part here. I want to uh, I want to make sure there's no dry spots anywhere. It's a boat, right? I mean, there's going to be water in here all the time. There's a dry spot. Man, it's going to take in water. That just hurts my feelings to see it do that. Okay, see all that extra epoxy? What is that called? <laughs> right, extra epoxy. Get rid of it. That's weight. Here we go. Pretty close. Yep. There you go. Gram scale. Tear. Seven times six. What is it? 42? That sound right? Six times six is 36 plus another six equals 42. Now, I don't know. It's already there. Let's do it.
Look how that soaked in. Almost nothing there. What really matters to me here is the midsection. Out here, this is, I mean, it's just support for the rest of the structure. I want it to stick, of course, but... I want this part back here where we're going to have the rudder here, and we're counting on this to support the rear of the floor where the strut goes. We want this to... We want this to hold. I want to make sure I see a epoxy standing on the surface. Not where it's drawn down in and now the surface is practically bare. Okay, I was talking to somebody the other day, messaged me. I, I really appreciate those messages, by the way. Uh, contact me if you have ideas. I mean, I'm just one guy here in my garage winging it. So. Tell me what you're thinking. And uh, can't remember who it was. It wasn't Roto Geeks. Anyway, somebody told me that um, um, their technique is they, they would wet it out like this, then they wait, and they will actually go back and scrape off the excess epoxy and then clamp it together. I don't know. And he believed that, uh, that there'd be enough there to... He said that it would hold it plenty strong. Um, I respectfully disagree. I, I spent time thinking about it, which is what I like. I, I, love, I love having reasons to think about this stuff and what I'm doing, and there's every chance I've done it wrong. I got a, I got a, I, man, I've gotten a ton of great ideas. I've, I've got some that we're already incorporating here. I pretend they're my ideas. <laughs> Not true. When, when I think of you, I, I, I credit you with them. But um, uh, yeah. I like it. I, I like being challenged and, and thinking about this stuff. All right, let's see. Uh, arrows go together. That's why I did that. Yeah, you were like, what, what's he doing that for? Okay. Now, we got a, we got a hoop-de-doop-de problem here, so here's what we'll do. That's good and flat. I don't think enough epoxy will ooze out to stick it down on there, but if it does, we can we can fight it out of there. Could stick a little bit of wax paper on here, I suppose. Boy, that's just yeah, it's big enough. Uh, but, uh, uh, you. Maybe I wanna yeah no I wanna get it all the way out here. No, I want support. Something like that. That's going to be awkward. Okay, hold on. You sit there. You come back. my piece of one eighth. I'm GoPro in it here again, so I, I have no idea if this is in line where you can see it, but I, I hope it is. More support. Thank you. I heard something fall. Oh. That's my one eighth. Why don't you tell me? Okay. Yeah, I, I think we're there. Okay. Sure.
Ooh, I don't want that slot to fill up. Not a super big deal if it does, you know, we can just, we can actually just butt that. Do you, do you remember what piece goes there? You'll see later if you don't remember. Okay, I'm gonna trust that that won't fill. Because I want to put a little pressure there. All right, let's take a look. Got you, got you. Yes, yes, yes. Come on now, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow. It's faster than sanding. Oh yeah, we're gonna sand it, but you know, you get those parts where there's a lot of epoxy. If you're careful, that just rolls it off real nice. Half inch X-Acto blades. It's not food. Jackson, you're looking good. Skinny, looking good. Okay. Get you a long chunk of something and some of that stick on sandpaper. <laughs> you got a dog? I know. Okay. This part's flat, remember, so. Hold it on there good to square. Almost got it all clean. Okay, now that radius section. If you scraped it well, this should just take a tiny bit of touch up. Okay. And you know, this is the piece we really want to leave alone. When you clamp that on, if you missed it a little high here and there, that's okay. This is really isn't much more than an epoxy holder for us. Uh, so that, that'll fill when we epoxy that in. All right. Now you're going to take, uh, this is for the other side. I already touched this one up. You know, you're going to take your little square file or whatever, whatever you need. Clean up any of these holes here a little bit. Anything you got epoxy in. I've already, uh, cleaned up these pieces that I have now laminated. I haven't finished it. There's still some excess epoxy like we were just cleaning off here. And so there's a number of places where we'll do that same routine with a razor blade, you know, on the bottom and, and scrape it and get those cleaned up. Okay. We'll do that all the way around. This was just a real quick rough throw together so I can make a couple of points. One is Michael, by the way, you're the man. This is the point where I would have noticed it and thought, aha, and then I thought I was really smart to figure it out myself. We, uh, we need to put the upper, you don't need to. Let me take that back. We should, or we could, or we will, or I'm gonna put this upper piece on the outboard sections on our non-trip slash trip sides because this gets installed now. Obviously you can't do that in here because then you can't slide some of these pieces together, okay? So this portion goes in later and we're not using both of them. We'll talk about that later unless I've already brought it up. I really don't remember. Out here, we're going to use, hopefully, uh, I don't remember if I told you to order eighth. You should have, or do it, or go to the hobby store. You'll go back to your pile of sticks just get one eighth and you're just going to put one eighth on the top here all we're doing up here is holding the deck on yeah i don't care about the deck it doesn't do nothing but it's just got to be there to hold paint remember on the back here you're not going all the rear because we need gosh jackson brown where's he at you just chill out here for a minute no oh, piggy's probably got the bed yeah she did i'm sorry buddy hang on Remember, you can't go all the way to the back. You gotta leave room for that one eighth piece that's gonna be the finish piece on the end there. Up in the front here, you're gonna have to figure that out. Stick it on. 
And let's go back and talk about that now, and then we'll talk about this. This piece, I've already sanded this one, cleaned the extra epoxy off. Remember, this is our shape. This is what we want to be using. Up here, I'll get back to this. Up here, you will recall, we had four of these 1 8 bull nose pieces stacked up together and shoved up under the front. And that kind of gave us the profile we were shooting for. That was temporary and that was all fine. We can't use those during final assembly, well, because the floor slants on its way up, you know what I mean? So if I slide these under there, we're actually going to be, I'm going to exaggerate, but we'd just be laying on the floor at an angle here at the back part, where right now we're going to be putting pressure on the bull nose. Once real assembly occurs, this is all just a test run, which you need to do, but we're going to be need to be putting pressure on the bull nose directly down against the material right out at the end. We don't want to be pushing from here because that's going to deform the shape of our floor, right? So we're going to support the very end of the floor. And since one half inch with these four of these eighth pieces held it back here, it's a little bit taller over here. And it turned out on mine, yours is going to vary slightly and just use whatever you need to get that, that perfect shape to bring the floor just up to touch this piece. Okay, these are the two you're going to put on first and the floor needs to be just brought up to it. We've already got these shaped perfectly, right? And we don't want to push up or down on them without support because these, the ends here will actually flex. You'll remember, you can't see it right now, but there's slots cut into this piece right here down to about this area here, I think. It's a real deep slot where these pieces, you know, wedge together. So it's easy to push this up or down. We don't want to be doing that. You know, we've got it shaped. It is where we want it. So once this is on, you're going to weight this piece pretty heavily so that it stays put. Remember, we're flat from here to here. And then you just want to bring the floor up to touch it. So create whatever kind of spacing you need to do to get that to where the floor just comes up and touches it. That's your spot. Now you can put your bull nose on. You can see I reversed one of these clamps here and put a little bit of pressure on it back against here and against the floor where we took our time and made that fit really nice. So we've positioned our bull nose. Now we can weight it against this. Okay. And you still, you're going to find here, let me take these out. You're going to find because wood wants to do what wood wants to do, that the floor might not be touching everywhere else. I don't know if you can see that gap over there. So we do need to just let, gently lift it up wherever there might be a gap because wood does crazy stuff. You might find yours just lays perfectly or you may find a big gap or a gap here and there. Uh, for me, it turned out that it looks like if I take a piece of this and I don't care that this only touches one spot now. That's all I'm trying to do because it'll just take a gentle lift. Maybe you'll be able to see that as I slide this back. See how that floor just lifted up and touched and it did the same over here. Okay, and again, li little gaps here and there is fine. We're gonna, there's gonna, we're gonna put enough epoxy in here when we actually assemble it, that that fills these gaps, okay? But you do wanna make sure that you don't have the floor, you know, doing something really funky. Although, who knows, maybe that worked great. Okay, back to the side, back to our trip, our non-trip, our flat piece, our exterior, the side, the end, the stop, the paint holder. You're going to now that everything is where we want it to be. This is just window dressing, right? So you're going to file this. You're going to clean this up. You're going to do whatever you got to do to get this thing to lay up on here. But if we've been living right, you know, and you clean things up nice, this really should and see how it goes over top of the floor. Okay. See, I got to push this piece just a little bit to make it go. It goes right on top of that floor. This theoretically, there we go. Slid on there. The bull nose will slide side to side. When we glue this together, I'll show you, we're going to make really certain that these rails are perfectly straight and all that. But this piece should go on like that, where it should, it should be very kind and it shouldn't push anything out of place. That floor actually needs to lift a tiny bit right there. There we go. Okay. Well, you can see we, I was actually able to make my little notch here that I was talking about so long ago because my decking uh, will now come down and sit just like that right 
And don't worry, you know, if there's little gaps, uh, spaces, uh, things don't line up beautifully, all this is gonna get finished sanded, okay? But one thing I hate, I don't know, I'm not, now I'm not picking on anybody, I get it, I've been there, I've covered it up with paint. But when you see wood boats assembled and then they, then they sand it and they have to sand a ton of the deck and you'll see them go through a layer or two where you can see all the, you know, the profile of, of the different layers of, of uh, plywood. That, that, and ooh, that just hurts my feelings. If you do a nice job of shaping everything, by now you've shaped all these and they should all line up. And when you get done, your deck should drop down and hit. Where when you're sanding this, you shouldn't be going down into second layers. And I've had to do it, and you know what? We're gonna run into it here and there. But if we take our time, it, it won't happen or it'll be very very minimal and you'll feel really good about yourself who doesn't like to feel good about themselves all right so back to where we were i'm gonna finish cleaning this one up it's gonna fit beautifully i'm gonna glue my 1 8 inch strips up here once i've assembled it like we have done here and we find this lines up I'm going to make a line and we will put it right there. If you wanted to get really sexy, you could cut this out and make it overlay into there. I used to do that. This is actually the first boat that I've done that I haven't done that just because I felt really good about myself for doing that. It's unnecessary and I'm trying to re restrain myself. I'm just going to lay it right up against it like that, just like we did on the bottom, which I also never used to do because I used to notch that all the way out. Let's talk a little bit about some of the finished sanding. Remember we talked about cleaning these pieces up? You know, on the bottom, you're gonna clean them up, you're gonna sand them a little bit, you're gonna make sure there's no lumps of uh, epoxy. We want this to sit down nice and flat on the floor. And you're gonna do the same thing on the top, right? And, oh, whoa, don't start sanding yet. No, there's, there's an angle on the top. First of all, you see, we gotta take some disc away here. You remember, we reprofiled this thing a little bit. Let me go ahead and pull this one off of here. These are awesome. It's not at all what they're meant to be used for, but some of you know what they are. See, we've got a long ways to go here. And you could, you could go over to the belt sander and just throw it on there and buzz it and be done. But we've profiled this now. So this is act we're actually gonna sand it ever so slightly at an angle so that it matches this or close to it. It's even more dramatic here. Can you see it? Because we're starting to, to take off towards the rear here. So when we go to our belt sander or your sanding square thing, rectangle, block, sanding block, you, if that's what you have, you will find you need to kind of sand this thing at an angle slightly and try to make it line up really nice. Why is that important? It, it's not. What, what if this is a little bit too low? That's fine. It, it's not really doing anything. What we don't want is this or this or this to be too high and pressing on the deck and deforming the deck when we lay it on there, okay? If it's a little bit low, again, that's fine. You can put some thickened epoxy there and it'll grab right to it. Um, I typically don't even glue to these because you'll wind up seeing that in the deck later on in the paint, you'll be able to tell where it's, where it's bit down on, on these pieces here. This section, I normally cut this and this completely out and I, I think that we will if you're building an electric, don't leave this one in there. I'd still cut this one out, it doesn't do a darn thing. But I would uh, leave this one in just to help with the structure a little bit. I don't like it being there for dealing with the nitro pipe and all that kind of stuff, so I take that out. Back here. This is probably the easiest way to see this if I remove this. Hang in there, don't go away. This is important. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this or how I can best show just how much needs to happen back here. The most critical one where you're cutting the angle is back here. Because right now, oh, if I stand that on there, I'll try to zoom in on that if I even have it in the GoPro. Of course it doesn't line up because this is a pretty dramatic angled shape back here as this comes down. Okay, yeah, you can't see it if I put it that way. So this, you definitely sand at an angle. You'll see, yours should line up like this anyway. The height of this piece, 
as well as over here lines up really well with the forward piece of the transom which means back piece is way high so when you go to sand this you don't want to be taking material off up here at this front edge you want to just be taking it here in the back so you're going to take this apart you're going to go to your belt sander you're going to touch that and you're going to come over and you're going to assemble it and then you're going to take it apart you're going to go to your belt sander and hit it and you can come back and assemble it until you get this into a nice configuration where it lays down really nice and flat. That'll give you a really nice large glue surface that'll stop you from assembling this and now pinching it with the clamp and getting this little funky little deformation back here and it'll just look really nice and what do I like to say you will feel good about yourself. <laughs> okay you got a little bit more work to do get these cleaned up get the 1 8 strips put up here on the top Get these sanded, fitted, assemble it, take it apart, assemble it, take it apart, clean it up, file it, sand it, do whatever you gotta do until everything looks like this here, where it all just assembles really nice, all your heights are right. And then, then, I promise you, I'm not kidding this time, we will put this thing together. We'll start gluing this. Okay, all right, get those things done, and we'll be right back here in no oh, 20 minutes. Okay, one more thing real quick, since we're trying to get all these parts finished up and ready for assembly, let's talk about these, first of all, these two notches that I alluded to that we're not using them both. And here's why, and here's why I'm telling you now. All we're gonna do with these is we're gonna use this 1 8 by 3 16 material. I'm doing this one-handed because I'm just holding the, my phone now to do this. It'll butt up to the front, and we'll install this later. By the way, don't, don't worry about this right now. This is just for explanation. It'll butt up to the front here, and it'll run into this back notch here, the inboard of the two. And that's all we need. It's totally overkill to put another piece along here. 100% unnecessary, okay? So eighth by 3 16 is going to go in here later. That's important to know now because it will lay down in properly here. Remember, even though we're gonna shorten this piece, these cutouts were originally designed for 3 16 depth. We're only going 1 8 inch depth now, so this will line up okay here, as well as back here, and we'll drop in just fine here. What's high is this piece here, because we're taking quite a bit out of this one when we sand it, so you'll find that it won't quite drop all the way down as far as it should. So when you're getting stuff prepared, and even if you forget, or if you don't go far enough or whatever, we can file this out or cut it with that Dremel cutting wheel later, but you're going to take this notch just slightly deeper so that this will drop in far enough to line up with this piece. Okay, can you see that where it doesn't drop all the way down? Okay, so you're gonna do that here and here. The others, if you've kind of been following along and doing things exactly the way I am, those will fit just fine. You're going to find the same is true on the outside here where you lay your one inch, one eighth inch, I'm sorry. Uh, didn't I get a piece of that out here? I did. When you lay your one eighth in here, oops, I'm out of focus. <laughs> I could see it, you couldn't see it. When you lay your one eighth on, on, the, one eighth on the top here, you will find that it doesn't quite drop all the way down here. So you're gonna take this notch just a little bit deeper. It, same thing, it, it'll go just fine on these other locations, okay? This has all been trimmed and fit and everything is perfectly in place right now. Nothing's glued, you know what I mean. But we are gonna be gluing it and instead of just smearing epoxy all over the place, give yourself some, give yourself some pencil lines. You'll never see any of it in these sections here. If you get sloppy in here, you're gonna see it later because we're gonna leave this wood. I mean, maybe you wanna paint yours and that's fine. But draw the line, just get it right up close, okay? Get right on it. See, that's something you won't see later, okay? So do that everywhere that things meet that floor because that's where we're gonna be epoxying when we go crazy and put this together. <laughs> 